Okay, this is a nice little flat board model of the liver and the pancreas. These are two accessory glands for the digestive system. And you're seeing the duodenum right here. Inside the pancreas, we can see the pancreatic duct. We know that the pancreas is both exocrine and endocrine. Most of its mass is for exocrine purposes, making digestive enzymes and bicarbonate-rich mucus to buffer the acidic chyme that will be entering the duodenum. These macroscopic folds that you're seeing here, those are plicase circularies. They help increase the surface area for better digestion and absorption of the monomers. Right here, we're seeing the gallbladder, whose purpose is to store and concentrate the bile. It does not make bile. Rather, the bile is made by the liver cells, the hepatocytes. The bile, of course, will drip through bile canaliculi and ultimately reach the right and left hepatic ducts, which merge to form the common hepatic duct. And then this is the cystic duct. And the common hepatic duct and cystic duct, when they merge, form the common bile duct. And some textbooks don't use the word common, they just use bile duct. And you can see the bile duct will merge with the pancreatic duct, and this will lead to this region here called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. There is a band of, of smooth muscle around that acting like a sphincter, and the contents will exit these ducts and enter the duodenum through the major duodenal papilla. On this model, you're seeing an accessory pancreatic duct that can exit into the duodenum more superiorly, and that would exit through what's called a minor duodenal papilla. All right, and then over here, this is the spleen that they're showing you. And this part right here is just a little piece of the stomach that's been cut open. Um, and you can see the rugi from the stomach right there.